Okay, well, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Rita Broadway, and I'm the uh, uh, Deputy Command Executive Officer and the Director of Civilian Personnel Management uh, for the Army Reserve. I'd like to welcome you to uh, the first of our employee assistance seminars that's going to provide some valuable information uh, for those of us who anticipate uh, a potential uh, couple of free days uh, in, uh, in uh, the next uh, couple of uh, 30 days or so. So I uh, want to welcome you. I would ask uh, that we are videotaping this so that we will be able to distribute it to uh, those who will not be able to make it today. So uh, I would ask that if you do have your badge on, you please remove it uh, for the video videographer. Uh, and then for our guest speakers, who if you could speak from the podium, then that will allow us to, uh, to get voice, good, good voice communication uh, for the presentations uh, as well. And with that, uh, I would like to introduce the Army Reserve Chief of Staff, uh, General Young, who would like to make a few comments. Thanks, Rita. Um, I'll be real brief. Um, we, uh, you know, as we had our uh, town hall meetings uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, one of the things that uh, came up was uh, to do whatever we could do to uh, try to provide some uh, financial planning counseling and uh, prepare people as best we can for what at this point, you know, we think is uh, is an inevitability. There's no there's no reason to think uh, from anything that we hear, anything that we see behind the scenes, um, uh, you know, at the highest levels of uh, emailing and uh, chatter and meetings that uh, that this is not going to happen. So. Uh, we, we need to uh, be prudent and, uh, and plan for it. And this uh, seminar today is designed to give you the best information that we have uh, at this, this point in time. Because we know this is, uh, this is not going to be easy. And that when you start talking about a 20% pay cut, that's, uh, that's real money to real people with real, real bills. So um, I won't belabor that point, but uh, please ask whatever questions uh, that you have, please make sure you speak up because this, the questions that you have are going to be the same ones that the, the folks have out in, you know, Omaha and uh, Oklahoma City and places that they won't necessarily have the benefit of a face-to-face -face, uh, interaction uh, with counselors. So th the fact that we're videotaping this and that we're going to make it available to them, that, that's as close uh, in some cases to one-on-one. To -on -one as, uh, as they're going to get. So without further ado, I'll turn it back over to Rita so, so we can get started. Thanks. Well, welcome. We do have some great information uh, that we will be passing out to you all today that will kind of help us navigate through a, a pretty stressful time for not only the, the civilians that serve us, uh, the Army Reserve and, and DOD and, and the federal government as well, but also this, it'll, it'll impact our military. There'll be some second and third order effects that will have a direct impact on the military uh, that uh, serve our soldiers and their families as well. So it's good to, to have some of the military supervisors here to gather some of the information uh, to assist our civilians during this time. If I could have the next slide, please. This is the schedule that we'll use. Uh, we're going to talk uh, about the furlough guidance, and I'll give you as much information as I can as I know it today, and I will caveat that as I know it today because it does change every, about every 24 hours, and we are moving out based on what we know at this particular time. Because as any good plan, you need to plan for an event. If situations change, then you can back up and regroup, but you've got to have a solid plan in place. We're going to talk about some benefits. Uh, some of the information that, uh, that is available is already on our SharePoint side. Some of you have already been to the DOD website and perhaps the D Department of the Army website, so some of this may not be new information, but this is a great forum for you to ask questions about that and get clarification as well. We also have some representatives here to today that will be able to talk about financial planning. Uh, it does have a financial impact. If you have not gone into the furlough calculator that is currently on our SharePoint site and actually plugged in your information, uh, it will, it's a very good tool that will tell you s with great specificity exactly the amount of, of money that you may in fact not receive each, uh, each week or every, every two weeks. So it's a great tool. I would encourage you if you have not done that to do that because it, it does give you a very good indication of how you may have to adjust your financial budget given this particular time. 
We also have uh, representatives from employee assistance here at Fort Bragg who will talk specifically to what's available here at Fort Bragg, some great programs, great seminars to help our civilian personnel and those others who may need it through this particular time. And then I want to make sure we leave time for questions uh, so that we can capture those not only for the audience here but also for those who may not be available as well. I do need to tell you that the Army Reserve is working very closely with the community of Fayetteville and the surrounding communities as well. Uh, it is not lost on them that this is having a financial impact to a great portion of their community, uh, the Fayetteville and Cumberland County, but also could have an, a dramatic impact on their businesses as well. So we are leaning forward in the Army Reserve. We have contacted the Chamber of Commerce. We are working with Chamber of Commerce members to see what kinds of opportunities there might be for our uh, employees who may be looking for some additional work uh, to see what kind of uh, venues we can do uh, collectively as an organization and a community to help each other through this. Uh, so I would anticipate that in the near future there may be some additional information that comes out of that from some of our businesses and our, and our corporate partners uh, to help us through this time. I would, uh, I would also ask and remind you that there are certain things that we can control as part of this process and there are certain things that we can't control as part of this process. We are being given directed guidance that we will implement a furlough. And so that is, that is a one element that we do not control. What we do control is the amount of information and support and assistance that we can provide to our civilians, their families, uh, the military and the, the Army Reserve community as a whole. So based on that information, uh, there, it is a directed furlough from DOD at this time. And DA has come down as well and directed a furlough. So that's the planning guidance we're going on right now is the, uh, the furlough will in fact happen last part of April and go throughout the, uh, the end of the fiscal year. Next slide. This is the DA, or this is the guidance that we've got as of today. We do not have Department of the Army guidance uh, yet. We anticipate that it will come probably either later today or tomorrow. We do have the guidance that Department of Defense has put out, but not the specific guidance from the Department of the Army. So when we talk about the furlough right now, we're going on the, the Department of Defense guidance. Whatever we say may change as far as how we implement the furlough, but when we're talking about pay and benefits and financial planning and employee assistance, that information won't change. What may change is how we implement the furlough over the next few, uh, few months. The current guidance is no more than 16 hours of pay period for a total of 176 hours. Now we focus on the hour portion of this because we, our intention in the Army Reserve is to accommodate those employees who do have an alternate work schedule. So right now, if you are under an alternate work schedule, we do have a plan to work with you uh, and allow you to continue that alternate work schedule should you want to. Uh, so we, that's why we speak in, in the, in the uh, 176 hours versus um, the eight hours uh, once a week, 16 hours per pay period. 22 discontinuous days is the language that is in DOD, uh, and unless we get some additional guidance from Department of the Army, that is the intent, is 22 discontinuous days. Now, the uniqueness of what we have in the Army Reserve is that this headquarters is not um, a bargaining unit. We are not under a union in this headquarters. Some of our subordinate units are, in fact, uh, and so some of this changes depending on what is negotiated with their particular union. The intent is to minimize the impact to our employees, and that's why when you see the DOD guidance, it spreads that furlough out over uh, from now, from April 26th until the end of the year, to minim minimize the financial impact. So when they were thinking through this, it was to, to try and have the least amount of financial impact to our employees if possible. At this time, we do intend to allow supervisors and managers some flexibilities with their employees so that they can accommodate them based on mission, based on workload, and based on, again, minimizing that financial impact to the employee. As you can see up there, you cannot use any kind of paid civilian federal employment to compensate for your furlough hours. So as we work through the furlough schedule and you work with your supervisor on what days you would, or, or the number of hours that you intend to be furloughed, you cannot substitute any federal civilian pay for that type of furlough. It is a non-pay day. Next slide. And on those non-pay days, you cannot work. So you can't use your BlackBerry, you can't take your laptop home, you cannot do any federal employment. 
Uh, the potential of doing that could result in an anti-deficiency act for the Army Reserve, and so we certainly want, don't want to do that. And some of the, some of the good information that uh, our, our partners in the Employee Assistance Program are going to provide is uh, a little guidance on what you might be able to, uh, how you might be able to use that extra day uh, that you, uh, you find yourself not at work. Your furlough days cannot be taken on your regular days off. Uh, or your alternate work schedule days so or weekends so it is a day that you are normally scheduled to work that you will now not be uh, allowed to work and the final bullet in uh, of the slide there is that there is no provision uh, should the f the sequestration and the and the furloughs be rescinded there is no uh, plan right now to reimburse employees so the challenge with this is as we schedule out furlough days, uh, you know, we have had some individuals come forth and say, well, I just want to do all mine up front. The, the risk in doing that, if it were even a, uh, allowed to do, is that should we, the furlough be over one or two weeks later uh, or 45 days later and you've taken all of your furlough days up front, you, you would not be compensated for those, whereas employees who had spaced them out over a certain period of time would be, in fact, getting their, uh, be back on the books. We are meeting with Fort Bragg um, and the 18th uh, Airborne Corps. There's a meeting ongoing, ongoing right now. Uh, we are in tune to what our partners um, at Forcecom are doing, uh, and we're taking both of those uh, elements because everybody's doing things a, a little bit differently to make sure that we can try and get as much synergy, recognizing that we, you know, we are an installation where we have spouses who who work at Forcecom, we have spouses who work at 18th Airborne Corps, and see if there's a way that we can accommodate some. Uh, some comprehensive means to be able to not be too dramatic on how we handle our civilian employees uh, if their spouse uh, or a family member works here at Fort Bragg as well. So we're going to try and synchronize our efforts with Fort Bragg, particularly because we have employees who use the child development centers, we have uh, employees who use other services on Fort Bragg, uh, and we want to maximize uh, um, the capability to continue to use those. Any questions so far? Okay, next slide. This is the timeline that we're on right now, and visually it will tell you uh, how we're progressing. You can see, and I'm not going to walk you through the entire timeline there, where I'll, where I'll draw you to is the week of uh, 4 March. We did publish an operation order, a planning order, that walked us through what the furlough uh, meant to us, some of the uh, guidance and instructions, not only for this headquarters, but also for our subordinate units. So it allows the management to start planning to start thinking about how you're going to work your employees' schedules, how you're going to accomplish the mission, where there might be some uh, events, such as submission of our unit status reports, some readiness conferences, and some other uh, events going on so that employees and uh, management can start to, to uh, talk about that time schedule. As I mentioned before, we are having to negotiate with unions in, in our subordinate units. Uh, those notifications went out last week. We're currently in that dialogue right now with our unions uh, to be able to accommodate what, what they feel their employees have a right to and what we can best accommodate for management. As part of the furlough process, employees will act, you will actually receive a notification, a proposal memorandum that actually tells you the intent to put you on a furlough. You will, we will hand deliver that to you as many as people as possible that, or we'll figure out a means with either the mail, certified mail or a return receipt requested. We have to have positive, positive control that every civilian employee has received that notice of proposal uh, to put you on a furlough. There is a response time that every employee has to respond back to the proposing official as to the impact of that or uh, you have an opportunity to make comments. Then there's another memo that comes out from a deciding official that actually then tells you that you will be furloughed. And so you will be getting two memorandums, one from a proposing official, the second one from a deciding official that will tell you you will be furloughed. Uh, and right now we're trying to figure out how you negotiate with your supervisor as to what your furlough schedule will be. Right now Department of the Army has not given us specific guidance as to what that form needs to look like or if it just needs to be a dialogue that's documented, if it needs to be a calendar. We're waiting for some more specificity from Army. If not, we'll develop our own so that there's some kind of an agreement between the employee and the supervisor that these are the days that you're going to be furloughed, the number of hours you're going to be furloughed. 
Right now, all indications are that the furlough, if it goes as planned, will be initiated on the 26th of April. That, of course, is the Friday of the first week of that particular pay period. So that would be the in initial time that we would conduct the furlough. We are planning to carry it out through the end of September. So that's the planning that we're negotiating right now. Are there any questions on this? I'm not gonna, I didn't wanna get into too much specifics right now. I just wanted to provide as much general information as I can so you can have an idea of what we're, what we're talking about uh, and the timeline that we're talking about. Uh, we do have requirements that we notify employees at least 30 days before we initiate a furlough. So right now our timeline to issue memorandums to the employees is the week of 23 March. So we're trying to get the information out to all of you uh, and let you know the timeline of what's going on so you can anticipate that and start to do some planning. Okay, if there aren't any questions, we're gonna get started with the briefings uh, and offering uh, some information on the benefits uh, and how they will be affected by this furlough. Uh, so with that, I'll uh, have, El oh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, what is, what is your opinion on the contract tour? If you're a COR, then the management's going to have to work with the CORs to determine what, how much and what type of oversight will still need to be attained with the contractors. So they're going to have to work and, and, and work out schedules and make sure that if, if there is direct oversight, that that schedule is worked out with that particular COR. Which the, the challenge has been uh, is that some have come in and, and some agencies are saying that I need to have an employee exempted from the furlough, which means that I don't want this employee furloughed. The challenge with that is if you make that request, then what you're telling uh, management is you can never let that person go on leave. Because what you're saying is that I can't do without this person, so I, I, I have to have this person every day. Uh, I can't let them be off one day a week or two weeks out of a pay period. Uh, so I, in fact, you know, I have to have this individual all the time. So there's, uh, I would surmise that there's some type of an arrangement uh, that each management staff section has with the CORs that allows them to take leave uh, and, still ha and still maintain positive control and oversight of that contract. I have one clarification. Uh, the 30 days, is that from the proposing memo or the deciding memo? It's from the proposing memo. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? All right, I'll turn it over now to Eleanor Richardson who will walk through uh, pay and benefits. As Ms. Brawley said, we have a calculator on the um, SharePoint that can tell you exactly how much that 20% reduction will be in your pay. And so all of you, I would encourage you to go online and look at that. Um, also, for your benefits, TSP may be affected if you have percentage. If you have a dollar amount that comes out, that same dollar amount will, will continue to come out. So you all may look at that and determine if you have a set dollar amount that comes out of your pay, it will continue to come out like that. Uh, but if you have percentage, then your percentage will be reduced based on your leave without pay. Your leave accrual, I'm sure you've heard this by now. Once you have had 80 hours of leave without pay, then you give back an eight, hour, eight hours of annual leave. So every 80 hours that you are uh, on leave without pay, then it's uh, reduced, it reduces your leave um, accrual. Um, right now, there's no impact on your high three because the way we look at our retirement for our high three, it's based on our annual salary. And that's picked up from our uh, 50s. So, they will not see a leave without pay reduction. You know, there will be a RPA done for this leave without pay period, taking us on leave without pay and putting us back, but that will not affect your retirement. So anybody who's looking at their high three, if this is part of their high three, it'll still be their high three because it'll be their annual salary minus the, the leave without pay. Don't worry about that. Um, you're within grade increases at this time. It does not affect that. If you um, are due an increase in September, August, you'll still get that same within grade increase. It does not, the leave without pay does not affect your within grade increase. 
Um, holidays, we all talked about the fact that if you are, take your furlough days before a holiday and after a holiday, then you would not get paid for a holiday. So a lot of you traveling back to Atlanta, you may say, oh, this is going to give me a five days together with the weekend and there's a holiday. Don't do that if it's going to put you uh, in the middle of a ho with the holiday in the middle because if you're in the middle of a holiday then you don't get paid for, if the holiday's in the middle you don't get paid for the holiday. Uh, to get paid for a holiday you must be in a leave status either annual leave or working. I mean not leave status, pay status. You must be either working or on, a, on leave, on annual leave so you wouldn't if it's just on one side of it, that's fine, but make sure that your holiday is not sandwiched in between two furlough days. Outside employment, we are getting a lot of questions about outside employment. The rules are the same as they've always been. No conflict of interest. You know, if you're an IT person, it would be kind of hard to go out and work in private industry as IT because naturally you can take some of those government, res government resources or uh, teachings from here. So you will always have to go to your chain of command to see before you take a second job, make sure that it's something that's not going to be conflict of interest. There's no severance pay with this um, leave without pay, which are furlough as you all would know. And then unemployment compensation, uh, that goes depending on the state. Um, some states, if you're on leave without pay for more than two days, you might get um, unemployment. In North Carolina, it's three days. But again, uh, that's not the uh, target here. We're not looking at putting people on unemployment and then having more expense to the agency and more expense to the state. Uh, this is the way we're supposed to be saving money. So we'd like to see people if they need the financial support to get another job. Next slide. Many of you have asked about your benefits. Rest assured that you'll still have coverage. And I think that's very important for you not to be concerned about if you have your health insurance, you'll still have coverage. But if you ended up having a, in most cases, if you just take one day of leave, a week, you're not going to have a problem with your premium being covered. But if you couple several days of furlough, which we're not supposed to do because this is discontinued, but if we did that, then there would be a, a problem with your premium coming out. And if that happened, then it would come out, you know, at your next full pay period. Your group life insurance, you will be covered, but again, your premiums are required. And so um, it cannot be prorated. So the next pay period that you got to check, your, your premiums would come out. I don't know how many of you use the flexible spending account, but when you put money aside for maybe you're expecting a large dental bill or a lot of medication, and so you, you have them put uh, money into an account for that, if you depleted that uh, account, then you wouldn't be able to continue to have coverage. You'd have to take money out of your pocket. So the thing about the um, flexible spending is that you can, they cannot reimburse if there's not money in the account until the allotments are uh, successfully restored. <clears throat> Long-term care, again, the um, coverage will be there. Let's see, next slide. Now, if you ended up not having enough money from your paycheck to take care of your benefits, this would be the order that the money would be taken out. Your retirement is taken care of first. That's what we all look forward to one day. Then they would take Social Security, Medicare, the federal income tax, and then they start with the basic, the life insurance, I mean the premium health insurance, the life, state income tax, local in income tax, and then any um, debts that 
are owed to the U.S., the court-ordered debts that are owed, and then optional benefits, and then any um, allotments you may have. And then as you see, IRS gets last, which I think that's very good. <laughs> Next slide. Okay, I'll be followed by Ms. Wigglesworth. Yes. The health insurance premium, or they're not in a pecking order, if there's not enough money to cover the full premium payment for that period, does the employee have to make that up, or does that have that hand? It'll come out, when they get a, a full paycheck, it'll start coming out. They'll have to make it up then, and they may get double so premium. The future, but they're, they're covered the whole time. They yes, sir. Okay. They're covered the whole time. Thanks, Eleanor. Good afternoon. My name is Sonia Rigglesworth, and I'm the FAMI Program Director for the Army Reserve. And I'm not going to take long, but I need to make sure that you all know that we have partnered with CPMO, and we have our four family available to answer questions or direct you to any community resources that you may need. We have to face it. I may be using for family in terms of where I need to go. This is certainly a life-changing event for all of us. And so what we're trying to do is minimize that impact by setting up a place where we can have a single entry point of information for you. So if you call Fort Family and it's regarding benefits, entitlements, we're certainly going to direct it to the experts. If it's community resources, then we're going to um, connect you with the community resources that may be available to help you closest to where you reside. So I'm not going to take uh, much time, but I want to thank Army Community Service. It's our uh, peers along the active component for being here with us. So I'm going to take this opportunity to present to you Ms. Lynn Olavarria. She's the Financial Readiness uh, Program Manager at ACS, and she's certainly going to have some information that we're all going to benefit uh, from. Please take this opportunity to look at this uh, quality of life and life skill training as something that's going to bring positive change to our life. I know we're talking about furlough, but this we can use this to uh, sharpen our financial readiness skills and certainly become a little bit stronger in those areas that we may need some help. Lynn? Good afternoon. I'm Lynn Oliveri. I'm the program manager for financial readiness here at Fort Bragg, and we fall under Army Community Service. I wanted to let you know we are located up at the Soldier Support Center. For those of you who are familiar with Fort Bragg, that used to be the old Womack Hospital. We're on the third floor, and I encourage you to come up and visit us and pick up anything you need if you don't get it when we bring our handouts. It's very important. We have a lot of different things that would benefit you, though. I invite you up there. Now, you'll see that we're talking about furlough financial survival skills. Very important. Because what we want to do is hope for the best, but plan for the worst, OK? And that's the whole reason that we've come up with a class. Your agency has invited us in, and we have a session of four classes. But we'll talk more about that in just a quick second. Slide, please. I want to tell you a little bit about the program and ways that you can fit in to possibly use some of the things that we offer. And the first one, let's talk about it. The program is actually twofold. It's a proactive and a reactive program. And on the proactive side, one-on-one -on -one budget counseling. We have gotten permission to open that up on a space available basis for non-military ID card holders. We normally service the active duty reserve on Title X orders, the active duty soldier, the retiree, and the family members. But we are, we are now able to open it up to DOD employees on Fort Bragg no matter what, on a space available basis. So I will give you the information that you can do, and you also hopefully you'll attend the class, get more information, and if you still feel that you want to come and talk to one of the counselors one-on-one -on -one and do an individual budget, we would be more than happy to help you with that on space available. Let's talk a little bit about the education piece. We are it for your financial education on the installation. No other agency, no banking from outside the agency should be coming in and teaching any of those classes. So whatever your needs are, we'll be happy to meet those needs. That's where your one hour block falls in. We're going to set you up starting this Wednesday. It's 
basically a brown bag lunch. We encourage you to come out and sign up at the end of this uh, town hall meeting. Get signed up for one of those weeks and we'll be happy to have a council here to go over everything you need to combat the furlough, okay, concerning your finances. Because we know planning is the key. If you don't plan, you won't be prepared. And we have some excellent ideas on ways that you can cut back and ways you can discover money you didn't even have. Having said that, Consumer Complaint Office, that is also one of the things that we are, the proponent. So if you're out there in Fayetteville and you receive unfair business practices, you've tried to rectify it, it has not worked, you need to come and see us. But let me say this, we're all going to be looking for ways to cover down on that missing income. Be careful for scams and quick, rich schemes. They're out there. Don't cash those checks for the guy who says he needs you to go into the bank and cash them because they're not going to be good. Don't take the check that comes in the mail that says, cash this check, send me $500 and you keep the rest. I promise you, you will be sorry. If it sounds too good to be true, it is. And I have clients daily with this, so that's the reason I bring it up. We can, any one of us can become victim, so please be aware of that. People will take advantage of any time, so please keep that in mind. We're also your solicitation office, just want to let you know, if you go outside today and there's flyers on your windshield, please let us know. That shouldn't be happening. We're the proponent for that. We do installation level events. We won't go into those too much, but we have Consumer Month coming up and a ton of classes and it's all information back there on the table. Next slide, please. Reactive, our program is reactive. You know, at, at this point now, the horse is out of the barn. What are we going to do about it? So we, we are going to go ahead and talk a little bit about Army Emergency Relief. Some of you know about it, some of you don't. Some of you know folks who have used it. But this is a program mainly for the active duty or the reserve on, on uh, Title X orders. But I will talk about the Fort Bragg Area Community Foundation. That one is for DOD employees. Let me tell you, it's a private organization. They have a representative for most commands on the installation. And they meet monthly. If you have a catastrophic situation going on and you need some help, keep us in mind for this. We are the catalyst at the Financial Readiness Office to help you get assistance through grants in this program. Now, I'm not gonna, they're not just going to pay general bills, but if you've got something going on, and most of the cases are like cancer in the family, and they're having to run the child or the family member back and forth to the hospital or visit them in the hospital, bringing family down from another location, that is very much a burden financially. So this agency is phenomenal, and I've seen them help with up to $2,500 in grants. So keep that in mind if you have a, a situation. Chaplain's Helping Hand program is also for the active duty soldier. It's assistance with food voucher once a year, but I wanted you to know about that. And of course, we run an annual campaign. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, let's talk about this class. This class is going to be offered in, in uh, four sessions, starting on Wednesday, and it's lunchtime, like I said. You can see the objectives there. I just want you to know that while we're in this class, we have a phenomenal fact sheet on the back that has four pages of least, at least of ideas on ways that you can find missing money, money you didn't know about, ways to cut back. We have TSP answer questions and answers just for the furlough. They're out, it's right there in the back. And we have many other things that we're going to have at the class. So I recommend that you come because it's going to be an opportunity for you to work your issues if you have any. You can ask questions afterwards if you don't feel comfortable and certainly make a one-on-one -on -one budget account, uh, appointment. If for some reason, I know I have a wide audience here, some of you are thinking when you get hit with furlough, well, that's a little less than I can put into investments. And some of you are thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to make all my bills? So because it takes, it's everyone's in a different situation, we have some answers for you if you need to contact creditors, you know, and talk about some of these things that might not get paid. It's a reality for some. So I, I, I would like to end, next slide, with this schedule. I'll let you know that the sign-in sign sheets are back there, right there. Please sign up for it. We've got a great class, and this is just a, a little tiny tidbit of what we're going to offer, just an overview, okay? Do I have any questions at all? I hope to see you all up. The class, very important, and take some of our flyers. I'm going to be followed by Ms. Lisa Loftonberry from the Employee Assistance Program. And I will be available at the end if you have any questions. Thank you.
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lisa Loftonberry, and I manage the Fort Bragg Employee Assistance Program. And uh, this program is one of the few programs on this post that is specifically designed with you in mind. It is designed for DOD civilians and their family members. Uh, and the goal of this program is really to support you when life events occur. And so this is a significant life event that we're experiencing. We are certainly in uncharted waters. And so this program to me is, this is a good time to highlight our EAP. Next slide. Okay, I like to keep things simple, the KISS principle. So let's just hit the five W's of the EAP so that you know what it is and how it operates. But before I do that, how many of you have heard of the EAP? Just by show of hands. Okay, well it is wonderful that I'm out here because I would say that that's less than a third of the audience is even familiar with the program. All right, so what is it? Who? Like I said, it's specifically designed for you, but what is it? It is a cost-free brief intervention program specifically designed for you to talk through what is going on with me, how am I feeling with this. There are a lot of emotions around a significant event like this as well as other events that may occur in your life that would impact your ability to perform your job would impact your work-life health is the way we talk about it. And so the Army is very structured, as you all know, so we offer one to four sessions to help you to identify what is the main concern I have right now and what's the way ahead. So it's a very cooperative process. We're going to talk through what you're feeling, what you're thinking, and where you would like to be compared with where you are. So that's what it is. When are we available? Well, we're available Monday through Friday, 08 to 1700, not uh, excluding federal holidays. And of course, now I need to add in and whatever the furlough schedule uh, ends up being will impact us as well. Um, where are we located? We're also located in the Soldier Support Center, just like Lynn said, they're on the third floor, ACS. We are on the ground floor, or another way to put it, which they don't like us to describe it this way, we're in the basement. But that's okay, because that's the first floor you get to. So we are located in the base, basement on the northeast entrance side. And why? Why does the organization even have something like this? Just like it says, to support organization health, welfare, and productivity in spite of the challenges that we're facing, we recognize that you're our most important resource. So we need to take care of our people when we're going through situations like this or when life happens outside of things like uh, a sequestration procedures and furloughs that go with that. So that's uh, the program in the nutshell, the five W's. How do you reach us? You can contact the EAP assistant or the front desk at 396-5784. And I also have Ms. Taylor's uh, email address up here. In addition, I have been partnering with your civilian personnel office here in USART, so I understand that this information is also posted on your shared drive or your portal, uh, so you have access to this information. Now, what is the main issue that we've been getting at the EAP reference to furloughs? Ms. Lynn Oliveira has already spoken to it, the financial concerns. But my office is really gonna be more focused on how are you coping with this emotionally? Emotions are energy, and my goal is to help you to navigate those emotions into something healthy and productive. So when we're not in a furlough situation, I ask myself, what's the number one reason people come to the Employee Assistance Program? Well, I can tell you, it starts with an S and ends with an S. What is it? Stress. There you go. So it's stress, and most of the time that stress is related to one of the resources that we consider most important to us, and that is time. So one of the things I'm going to challenge each one of you to think about is, though this can be financially challenging, it is an opportunity to look at those things that stress you when you're not in a furlough situation related to time. I don't have enough time to do this. You are being provided with a blessing in time while a challenge may be financially, so I would ask each of you to ask yourselves, what will I do with this time that is productive, that is healthy for me? So uh, that's the piece with that. In addition, I put together an EAP uh, resilience tools for living in a furlough. 
And that should also be available on your portal. It has great information from OPM about an administrative furlough. Uh, it has information on all of the on-post uh, resources available to you. Also, it has information for off-post resources, and some of them uh, fit right in with what Lynn spoke about. Your federal uh, education and emergency assistance program is the FIA program, which is specifically designed for civilian employees who need emergency financial assistance, along with the Fort Bragg uh, resource that Lynn spoke about is also in that packet. In addition, we are offering in partnership with ACS successfully facing uncertainty uh, over at the Family Readiness Group Center, which is in the Soldier Support Center, every Tuesday and Thursday, at lunchtime, 1200 to 1330 hours, you will have the opportunity to meet with military and family life consultants to work through the emotional piece with this and come up with ideas together. We are available to bring that into your compound as well. And then just in general, the Employee Assistance Program offers bi-monthly sessions dealing with all types of topics related to your work-life health. Uh, the two coming up in March will be preventing bullying in the workplace. You will be surprised when resources get uh, tight, that's when sometimes it brings out the worst in us and we need to be reminded of how to treat one another uh, respectfully. Uh, we may not have to have milk and cookies with one another after work, right? There's no requirement to be friends, but there is a requirement to respect what each person brings to the workplace and treat them as such, even when we're in time, lean times like we are now. So that's pretty much what the EAP uh, has to offer you, individual, if that's needed. We can also come into the compound and offer some different uh, trainings related to taking care of ourselves in situations like this. Um, in closing, I would just like to leave this with you, that look around, look, look, at your, look down your row, look behind you. We are all in this together, and I usually share a story about that, and it has a little mouse in it. The mouse goes to his coworkers and says, there's a mouse trap in the house. So the mouse is very concerned, right? But there's a chicken, there's a pig, and a cow. Those are the coworkers. This mouse goes and tells them about it. They're not that concerned. But as the story goes on, what actually ends up happening is they're in a farmhouse. The farmer's wife finds a snake in the mousetrap. It bites her. She becomes ill. So what does the farmer do? He takes to the hatchet and gets the chicken because she's sick. So chicken soup. There goes the chicken. All right, well, things are really not going well. She comes home from the hospital. Lots of people come to visit. What does he do? He takes to the hatchet and gets the pig. Got to have some Lunchables for the people that come to visit. But all in all, things did not work out. She continued to get worse, and she passed on. But all of the people from all around came to the funeral service and afterwards. So what did he do? He took to the hatchet, and he had to chop up the cow to feed the people that came to share their condolences. So what is the moral of that story when I usually share it when I do my EAP brief? When one of us is at risk, right, we're all at risk. When one of us is threatened, we're really all at risk. And that's what I want you to keep in mind. Because one person might think, this is great. I have a furlough coming up. I got extra time on my hand. While the person at the next cubicle might be thinking, I'm a single parent. This is not great. This is 20% cut in my pay. I don't know how I'm going to make ends meet. What I would say to you is, that's the mouse trap, and when someone in your work environment is saying that there's a mouse trap in the workplace, there's a mouse trap in the workplace, we need to be concerned and make sure they know how to access resources because it actually places us all at risk. So, what happened to the mouse? What happened to the mouse? He sadly looked upon it all. All right, well, I'm Lisa Loftonberry. That's my presentation. I hope that if you have any questions, you'll stay after and ask. And if I have any now, I'll happily take them. Thank you. Here's the information that we have posted. I know we've put this out in numerous venues and emails, but this, if you, if you want more information, we are placing all of this on our SharePoint sites. 
uh, the slide presentations, all of the information that we can so that if you have uh, individuals or you want to find out more information for yourself, this is where you can go to actually find that information. The, the, the additional funding for the van pools has come back into play uh, for those of us uh, here at Fort Bragg. So as you're looking for opportunities uh, to save money, perhaps not put as much wear and tear on your, on your vehicle and save a little gas money uh, as we go through this, We'll put that on the, on the SharePoint site so that you can actually look into that and maybe start to ride the van pools, uh, which, and I do, which is, it's, uh, it's very beneficial. So with that, that concludes the, the formal part of our presentation. We're now open for questions. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, if you're on an AT and you're on military leave, is that also going to affect your military leave if you're on a furlough? If you, if you, the question is, is if you are on military leave, is that going to affect uh, be affected if you're on a furlough. It depends on the schedule that you work out with your supervisor. If, you, if you're on annual training and that happens to, and one of those days happens to be your normal furlough day, you will not be able to take military leave. So that's one of those, in, those situations where you'll need to work that schedule out with your employee, your supervisor. On that furlough day, you cannot be drawing any federal money as a civilian. So you can be in no civilian pay status. Question. It's whatever your leave of school is, I'm sorry. Just want to make sure I'm not giving back more than your <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. You can answer back. They can't be making federal civilian pay. Correct. Would they be earning federal military pay? There's nothing that prohibits a civilian, if you're a, a TPU soldier or a reserve soldier in another service, from doing your military duty during this time frame. Okay, with that, I want to thank you uh, for your attention and for your time. I would, I would really stress that as you go back and you talk to your colleagues, you go back and you talk to your family members, you go back to uh, and, and talk with each other, that if you have questions or you think of questions, We've put the, uh, the contact information up. You can contact Eleanor uh, Richardson at CPMO. You've got the contact information for the speakers here. Don't let the questions go unanswered. Please make sure that you have as much information as possible and that you've got the facts before you make life-changing decisions about what you want to do and, and changes you want to make as a result of, of this particular stress and, and uh, speed bump in, in our uh, civilian workforce. So please, uh, make sure you're informed, make sure you have the right information. Uh, and with that, if there are no further questions, uh, we'll uh, let you go and set up for the next session. Thank you so much.